Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, um, you would have remembered we had um, a little look in our Samuel Pius Aminia. Um, we left her with her egg sac and that subsequently hatched inside the box, which was the plan. That's what we wanted to do. She's in here now. You can possibly see the little slings are all over the place. They're all through there. I don't know if you can see them through the tape. But we ended up, because we had our air holes along the tops here, we ended up having to put some masking tape over the holes to stop the slings all vacate in the tub before we were ready for them. So what we've done here, we haven't just put tape across here. What we've done is we, we took a piece of tape and then we put another piece of tape and stuck it to that so that we had a dry piece of tape actually against the holes. Do not put tape straight over holes because your slings will still find the hole and they'll find that sticky tape and then they will then in turn get stuck to it. So always make sure that you have something on there. Now, if I can, um, so basically I'll show you, look, cause this is a bit weird to explain. So just in case you're not quite understanding what I'm saying, we get a bit of tape and we have it sticky side up like that. We get another bit sticky side up yeah like so and we lay them like that so this they're sticky side up now and then what we do then is we get another piece of tape so we put the sticky side to the sticky side on these ones so it's like that yeah so now as you can see this is not sticky anymore and what we do then is we can pick this up we've got sticky on the bottom sticky on the top and we can then put it on our thing like that and we can stick it to our tub but the the piece in the middle here which would be covering the holes is not sticky at all so it's totally safe for your spiders you might sort of sit there and say well why didn't you just put it on the inside of the box the reason being is because these edges will quite often peel and also our adult spiders they can quite often chew and pull at this with their feet, believe it or not. And if they pull that up, and then that ends up like that on the inside of the enclosure, we stand a chance that our female will get caught up in it, or we're just going to end up with a load of slings stuck to this like a flypaper. So very, very important that we do it like that so that there is no stickiness on the side of the spider. Most important. So... Um, I hope we sort of cleared that um, because we'll get lot, we'll get asked lots and lots of questions. Right then, so what we're going to do now is we are going to open this up. And we're going to see what kind of um, mood our female is in. I should imagine she'd probably be quite glad to get see the back of them. But there we go. So she's got one leg up. So there she is. She is a lovely, lovely spider. We can come over here a bit. Oh, she's actually gone down inside the box. Can we get a bit of light there? We can find a bit of light. And as you can see there, she's gone down there in with them. Now what we can do is we can try and get the majority of these out. Um, with her in there. If I try and grab a couple first, we'll see how she behaves. Um, she might not be very happy. So, but sometimes what they'll do is they'll hunker down and they won't go anywhere. So there we go, we've got one. We've got all of our tubs here ready. Right, I think we can probably have a go at literally doing them as they are. So we'll leave her in there for the time being. And then hopefully if she stays down the bottom there, camera lady will be able to catch up all these ones that are on the top um, without her being too much of a nuisance. 
Because the other thing is, is if we try and get her out now, we might end up with spider limbs exploding everywhere. So if we can do as much as we can with her in situ, that will be a good shout. So we'll give that a go. So camera lady is going to do the catching. Because as you remember last time when I done it, it all went a little bit peep tong and uh, we end up with spiders everywhere. But in my defense, I am going to say these are a little bit slower. So camera lady should be fine. I don't think we're going to have any problems. Touch wood. Right, let's get me out of the way. Because I know you've all been asking, when are we going to see camera lady catching spiders again? Well, here we go. So we're going to put this over here. Hopefully she'll stay there. Right, let's go. Let's have a little swap around. Here we go. The old faithful stall for the vertically affected. Right. So what we're going to do now. Now you see, look, she's done exactly what she moans at me all the time. She says, I can't see nothing. And I'll tell yeah, you to. Because you've got to see, you see. So what we've got to do now is we're going to concentrate on them babies, get them out as quick as we possibly can. Looks like mum's on her way. I think I saw some toes yeah. there. Right, let's get cracking then. We'll see what we can see what we oh. can do. Okay. Your lids are here. Your lids are here. She's right here now. Look at all them babies. Lots and lots of them. That's really cool. Right then, do we think we're going to be able to do this? Yeah. Try. Yeah. Edge one off the edge. Perfect. So as long as we keep things fairly steady, mm -hmm. we should be all right. Take a bit longer with us up there. No, just keep going. Mm. You see, what we have to do is walk them around, as you can see there. Got away. All right, so what we'll do, give me my paintbrush, other one. What we do is we're going to see now if we can't get mum to go back down. Mm. She'd rather come up. Okay. Right, we'll remove her. You can stay where you are. We're going to see if we can't get her into this lovely tarantula room box. There we go. It's as easy as that. Okay, you can let go of my paintbrush now. No. You can see how she wants to come out. So you have to watch your fingers. Watch her toes as well. We don't want to don't want to lose a toe. There we go. So that is her there. So that's her nice and secure. Now we can crack on. <coughs> right. So as you can see, we'll get a nice close up of these guys. Lovely healthy spiders. Mm. Yeah, very nice spiders. Mm. As we can see there, look, there's loads of them. They're all sitting down on the thing. Now, this is one of the things that um, we've been experimenting a little bit. And as you'd have remembered, we, 
we quite often we pull sacks as well and we take them away and we incubate them ourselves but with a lot of spiders like these these often do really really well with mum and they're normally um, pretty good mums generally speaking so here we go if we can't go this side mm. all right we're going to do the speed test now oh, God. yeah Thing we need to do is change the camera lady's pay schedule so it's not by the minute it's by the day <laughs> there we go They're coming through so these guys have been actually um, mobile uh, in this sort of state they've been molted out into slings for quite some time now so we probably left them in there for around about three weeks I should think so they've been in there a good while and as you can see there what we're doing is we're catching them off the edge so we're trying to leave that clump as it is try not to disturb it too much because we don't want spiders running all over the place so if we just try and tease the outside ones away you see all the rest of them are staying put this will make your job much easier nice and simple so we're looking at a, a steady methodical approach there we go Ooh. got one on walk about look at that very very pretty Now these guys are all be ready to feed now, so they've not actually had a feed yet. Um, you can see that. Uh, looks like he's got black socks on. Absolutely wonderful looking slings. Ooh, we nearly done a runner. He's white. You got him. So as we were saying, these guys will be ready to feed now. So as soon as they hit this stage where they are actual slings, then, then they will start taking live food. Now, what we have found is as long as we leave them in there with no food, they're, they're quite all right. They can go a couple of weeks without any problems at all. Um, and occasionally what we will do is we will feed mum a, a real nice big roach and uh, sometimes you'll see them slings will actually crawl down and share the food with her. But once we get them potted up like this, we will leave them for um, a small amount of time, maybe a day or so, 24 hours or so, and then we'll feed them. And these guys will take um, very small crickets or roach nymphs at this stage, and they'll be nice and easy. Now, as we come over here, we can have a look. These are all our pots that are all ready. So all we do, as we can see in here, is we sort of three-quarter fill them with um, damp substrate. You can see that there. You can see by the colour of it, it's nice and damp, but not wet. So it's literally just sort of moist. And then that is enough. And then what we do then is we pop our slings in there, as we can see these ones here that are already done. We can see these and that is it they don't need nothing else above that a couple of holes in the top just to get some ventilation in there and then we'll give these 24 hours or so and then we'll feed them and they should all in theory take food now one of the things that's worth mentioning 
when you end up, you pull a sack like this, if you're starting to breed your spiders, um, and you get them all potted up like this, be prepared for some losses. Because, as we can see, we've got 70 pots here. I'm sure there's more than 70 spiders, so we'll have a final count at the end. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We'll have a final count at the end. But there are going to be some losses in amongst these spiderlings. And this is just um, this is just the way it is. It's you know it, it's um, survival of the fittest in some respects with a lot of these spiderlings. So there will be a percentage that will be what we would class as natural wastage. So there will be a few that will perish for no apparent reason, and they will look absolutely perfect but we will still lose them and we've got no answer to this apart from the fact that we can just purely put it down to natural wastage now in the wild state not all of these spiderlings would survive a very very high percentage of these spiderlings will not make adulthood so i would at a guess i would probably think maybe 20 percent of them would um would make adulthood in the wild that is purely a guess um they literally this is half the reason why they have so many because they are predated on by just about everything including each other in the wild now obviously in captivity we control what goes on so we can actually make our successes far far higher so we can look at depending on species because some species are very very delicate and we lose more of them other species are very hardy like these aminias they are a hardy spiderling so we would be looking at possibly having anywhere between 80 and 90 percent of these guys would will survive now, it's not always the case. When we look at things like um, Avix, and we look at things like Versicolors, they can be a little bit temperamental as slings, um, and we can lose them for no reason at all. Uh, some of the other ones that we've had, um, i trying to think now what, what others are, can be a little bit on the delicate side. Many of the Avix, and also many of the Pisletheria can be delicate as well. So they're all very, very different. So just be aware, if you're breeding, do expect to get some losses. doesn't mean you're a bad keeper. It just means that, you know, this is part of the natural wastage. As you can see there, camera lady is absolutely flying through these. And you can see there by having a nice methodical system, you see she's catching them with one empty pot and then putting them into one of the tubs that's already made up. They're going straight into the the bra plast tubs that we have here. And we use these to, to hold our slings because we can get, I think it's 35 tubs in a tray. So we know every full tray is 35. Makes it very easy for us to count them up at the end of the day and keep an eye on what stock we have. So we can keep, keep a good idea of what we've got without having to spend too much time counting and playing around. We are flying through these. I've got them off of the. I'm just going to get this little one. Yeah. There we go. Nicely done. Little flick into the pot. He's okay. Oh, yeah. It won't hurt them. <coughs> it's the easiest way to get them out of the pot is just to flick the pot and they literally just come straight out of one into the other. <coughs> Very cool. All right, how many more we got left in there? I know we got more than 30, that's for sure. Oh, as we can see, we've got lots in there now. Right, I think what we shall do, we will hold fire with the filming, get these caught up, 
and uh, we'll see you back here shortly. So all we're doing now is we're just preparing some extra pots because we've got more slings than we had pots made up for. So camera lady's going to carry on catching them and then I shall just prepare some new pots. Now what we got here, this is just um, our normal potting compost and we've also added some cocoa fibre to it because our compost was very, very wet. So by adding the cocoa fibre in a dry state, it's actually allowed this to dry out and now we've got this nice and moist. So you can see that. That is the sort of consistency we're looking at. And then when we go like that, you see it just crumbles away. And we've not got anything really left on our hands, you see? So that's a good way of checking. And then once you know it's looking like that, we can then get used to seeing the color of it. And you can tell by the color, just at a glance, whether your substrate is damp enough or not. So these are all little things that you will pick up as you go along and uh, will make life a lot easier for you as you as you go forward. Now, with the with the tubs, we're using um, these sling pots here, and we literally just fill them up to that point with loose loose substrate, and then we can literally just poke it down until it's about half to three two thirds of the way down. So it's just compacted it a tiny bit, but not a lot. And that is it, that is it. That is their new home set up, ready to go. So you can see we just fill it up with loose stuff, tap it down with our finger. And then what that does is, that keeps it um, with just enough compactness that it will hold the moisture to it without it drying out too far, too quick. And also it gives it a little bit the firmness when we pack it down that our spider can actually um, burrow down into it if it so wishes. Now this is something that we often get asked. You know, some of them will burrow down, others won't bother at all. They'll just stay on the surface. It's nothing to worry about. Your spider is making its own choices. Let it do its own thing. If it wants to sit on the surface forevermore, that's fine. If it wants to dig itself down and disappear, that's also fine. Don't be panicking about it. Let your spider choose its own its own way. So we're gonna okay. As you can see, we're flying through these now. There isn't a great deal left in there, I don't think, is there? A few. A few. Do we have an estimate? Thirty. Thirty. Oh, that was rather, rather precise estimate, wasn't it? Mm. Is that thirty more tubs you need, or thirty-five? One more of these. Oh, one. Oh. Okay. I shall just keep making them up. As you can see, it's nice and easy, and. Um, if it wasn't, if we wasn't filming, we would literally be flying through these. Kind of. Kind of. Unless, unless camera lady decides to let them go and walk about. <laughs> or on the table, wherever you want to go. You ready? Yeah. No. No. Here we go. Ah. You're the best at this. I don't know. Got cold. I've just shown my skills there. <laughs> I caught that one. I hope you saw that, guys. I caught that one. I must admit, this has gone an awful lot smoother than the Murinus did. 
that was a little bit of a headache. There we go. A couple more of these done. Now another thing that we do actually with um, that helps us because we have such a large number of spiders, um, we do different little things to enable life to become a little bit easier. So we end up with um, our substrate. We make it up in bags so that we've got bags of it all ready to go, um, like big sacks. So we just use the um, the sack that the, the compost came in, and. Um, we get it all made up ready, like here, and that's, that is all made up, ready to go, and then all we've got to do is pull it out when we want it. And this saves us an awful lot of time going forward, especially when we've got little jobs like this to do. We can just keep cracking on, we've got everything that we need. And even if you've only got a small collection, it's worth in in a lot of respects it's worth buying some of your stuff in bulk so you might sit and think oh i'm never going to use a big sack of potting compost but you'll be surprised how, how much you will use it and even if you don't use it straight away it can sit in the garden under cover somewhere until the day that you do need it and that would have saved you an absolute fortune so in terms of um costings we can get a 70 litre sack of normal potting compost for under £10. Um, most of the time we get it, it only costs around about £5 a sack. So that is a huge, huge saving when you consider that you will pay more than £5 for a little tiny bag of reptile soil which is no different really. You know, you're paying for a name and you're paying for a whole load of packaging. So we can make this really, really a cheap hobby where it doesn't have to cost us much at all. Make money on spiders. Yep, the more money we save on things like substrate and bits and pieces. This is why we use all our own bark and stuff like that. We do buy cork bark, we do buy it, and we use it quite a lot, but we substitute it with our own bark that we collect as well. And the same with the branches, the moss, all these different things. We, you know, we can save an awful lot of money by just being a little bit inventive and, um, and working these things out. Now, um, in terms of, of dangers there, you know, as long as you're sensible and you're careful, you're not going to be putting your spider in any danger. Far more danger to your wallet if you don't. Alright, so we're going to get these over here. Put these in. We should be almost there now, I would have thought. Yeah, not far. Must be getting close. So we'll put these over here. Put them there. As you can see here, this is some of the webbing that um, Camera Lady has pulled out of the enclosure. And uh, this would have been part of the initial defense system from our adult female, where she would have webbed over the top of the bark from where she was hiding behind um, to protect herself and her egg sac. So this all goes in. So we can take this out, we can get rid of this, we don't need it anymore. That can go. We've got a little bit of soil here. Got a bit of rubbish there, we don't need that. That's come out of the soil. Put that down there. Nice tidy desk. What are we doing, Cameron Odie? This one wants to play. Come on, in, in the in the top. Oh my dear me. Don't want to squish his legs. No, don't squish him. Do you need help? 
Not this time. Chance. Got it. So, so far we've had uh, two full trays. So there's, what's that? That's 70. Um, find a lid. Lid here. So that's 70 of them. We've almost got another full tray there as well. Only got a few. Oh, that's cool. So then what we're going to do is we we got our faithful old masking tape. As you know, we like this stuff. This You can stick this on anything and take it off. And it don't leave any residue. Keeps your enclosures nice and clean when you've taken the labels away. And we're going to label our boxes now. So... We just need to put the name of the spiderling that we got. So that's a P Aminia. P Aminia. We've got another box there, so another label. And a third one. There we go. So then we can. Literally label the front of our box so that when they're up on the shelf, we can tell straight away exactly who is in what. Otherwise, it becomes very confusing. And we keep all of our trays together, so all of our aminia will stay together. We don't mix them up. So we've done that there. Are we nearly there? We're on the final countdown. Yeah. We've probably got another five in there. Another five? Oh, we've got just about enough boxes then. That's my poor old belly. I think we have little, little messages in the web saying, don't go this way. Right. <clears throat> well, that is quite a count up, really. That's a good sack. Oh, look at that, that is almost there. Now, as you can see, we're, by taking the female out, we've made life an awful lot easier um, and less stressful for our spider as well. Sometimes with some of our spiders, we can leave them in there and they're not an issue. They don't tend to worry too much, but others are a little bit more defensive and many of the Samopayas, they are quite a defensive spider generally. So uh, we are looking to be getting some kind of defense um, from them. So it's often better to actually take them out as soon as they start that behavior, remove them from the situation, and we can put them somewhere calm. And in that way, we're not giving any stress to our adult female. We're keeping her nice and steady. There we go. I think that's the last one, is it? I think it is. Lovely. So almost three full trays. So what is that? 70, 80, 90, it's 102. Is that right? No. Hmm? Is it? 70. No, it's not. What am I looking at? That would have been 90, wouldn't it, with three of them there? So we've gone it up with 80, 88. Yes, I got there in the end. 88. 88. <laughs> right. That should be it, baby. That is it. Okay. Right then. So we need to get another lid. Um, 
another lid for this tray here. So 88 youngsters, all in all. Right, let me just take this off of here because we are going to struggle. Put this on here. Thank you. There we go. Right, we are back up to normal. Take that piece off of there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, we caught up 88 slings. So that's really, really cool. Look at that. We were only three pots over. So we can tip them straight back in to our bag. They're ready for another day. We just literally clear up as we go along. Makes life a lot easier. Um, them in there. That one stays there. And then what we're going to do, now what we can do now is we've got our um, our enclosure. And as you can see, it's a little bit scrappy in there. Now also as well, look at this. This here, this is the remainder of the egg sac. So once they've hatched out, this is what was left. And it's just um, just rolled up into a tight ball. If we're very gentle, we can probably tease it open. So, almost. There you go. There you go, look at that. That is the actual egg sac that's there. Isn't that cool? Look at that. You see, that could have been might have just gone completely unnoticed and this is one of the things if you get used to seeing what different bits of web look like you can start to piece together what is going on inside your enclosure so there you go look at that there's the egg sac there Isn't that marvelous really cool and that would have been the strand from when they when it was all wrapped together and then they roll it over and that is how it is. And that would have been it. Right, so we're gonna, we don't need that anymore. We get rid of that. Well, we can take this opportunity now just to have a little blitz through and clean our enclosure out. Now we don't need to go overboard because we want her to go back into something that's relatively what she remembers. We can also take away our sticky tape. So we've got our air holes back visible again do you remember what i was saying about it being non-sticky in the middle you can see there now that's the sticky sides there you see so that kept them nice and safe stopped them from uh, disappearing all around the room now we can take this stuff here Right, I think what we'll do is we'll get rid of that. Oh, don't want that one. So we'll get rid of that. That's just a bit of rubbish soil now. There we go. Give that a quick clean. Get our brush. Now remember, we're not looking at getting this to a pristine state. We just want to get rid of the majority of the, the rubbishy bits out of it. Put that in there. Yeah, we can take them off now because we don't need them anymore. So this is our information from when our, our we had our egg sac. So she was paired on the 17th of the 12th. And also on the 11th of the 12th. And we got a, an egg sac on the 14th of the 2nd. Now we didn't put... Um, sometimes we can put when we see a hatch date. And other times we don't We don't worry. With these guys we don't really worry. Because we breed these quite a bit. So the, we don't worry too much about them. So we can take this information here. We don't need that anymore. That can all go. Take that off of there. We'll leave her name on there, and then all we're going to do is 
literally give that a little swizzle around like that. Sorry? Yes, well, this is literally just to give it a little bit of a clean up. So we can clean the sides down. Um, we could have got away with just putting her straight back in there, to be fair. Um, but why not take the opportunity and, uh, and just give it a spruce out. And we can also give it some fresh substrate. Because what we're going to be looking at for now with this particular spider is we are going to look at getting her fed up again now and then getting a nice malt out of her and then we will probably this is a young spider this one so we could possibly get a malt and then we could pair her again or we could let her go through and have another malt and then pair her on the second time so with the young spiders we can actually we can pair them straight after a malt and they'll be fine um, with our older spiders we quite often allow them to have a bit more time so this is the same substrate that we used in the sling pots so we just put that in there so it's nice and clean just give that clean we're going to use the same bit of bark um, and if you notice we've not really bothered cleaning this bark and the reason being is because we wanted to have some familiarity. So this has got her web and everything on it, all the rest of it. So we're just going to put that straight back in there. That's not going to be any issues at all. Put that in there like so. We're going to fill up her water bowl. And that is her done. She is ready to go back in. So we've got her in here. Now you've got to be very, very careful with these guys because they they can be rather fast. There we go. She might just find her own way out. Are you going to find your own way out? She's still in that little bit of a defence posture. So what we can do we can either take the end off. She's going to come on her own, I think. Mm, we can take the other end off. This is why they were designed like this. Now, what quite often you'll get now is she might turn around in the tube to actually go for the paintbrush. Or she might just walk out. It's like I can feel someone tickling my bum. You've got to be careful now that she don't come round the side of the box. So we just tickle her feet. You see how her legs are angling round to the, towards me? That's what you want to be careful of. Because sometimes rather than going straight down, you see how she's turning now? Take the box away gently. There we go. Now what they'll, do, what they'll do sometimes is when they come round like that and they'll turn round, they will run up the outside of the tube, which is what you don't want. So always be aware that that might be where it might be thinking of going. They don't always do exactly what you want them to do. So just be careful. Watch your fingers. They are, as we've seen before, very, very fast. Now we can try her with a roach. We'll get her a roach and we'll see if she's hungry enough. She probably, she might be a little bit too upset, but we'll give her a go. Right, we've got, we've got a nice big fat roach here. So what we're going to do, we'll try... What we want to do is try not to intimidate it with it, so we're just going to offer it to the very edge. There you go, she's got it. Oh, 
That'll take her mind off things for a little while. Now you can see there, when we put her back, we didn't really see any really um, defensive um, positioning from her. And as long as we're nice and gentle, we can, we can maintain that nice, calm um, demeanor that she has at the moment. You can see there, we've got the light literally right on top of her now. It's not bothering her in any way. She's just going to hold that. Right. I think what we'll do now is we'll put the lid on her. And uh, see how she goes. Well, we'll leave it there for a moment. Right, what we're going to do... Um, now, although this was an absolutely fabulous success, and uh, we got a nice, nice clutch of... Um, of youngsters there 82 i think i said there was 88. 88 sorry 88 slings out of that sack so that's a really good result that's a lovely result now when we're breeding our spiders it isn't always this good now we've had an absolute um disaster in the last few days here in the beastie room you would have remembered we had our big female lp that came into us with an egg sack and she managed to do the journey she got here she still had the egg sack um, and she's maintained that egg sack she was doing really really well we also had our electric blue female she had an egg sack and everything was going swimmingly very smoothly we also had our jamani female which you would have seen holding her egg sack on the side of one of these tubs here she was in there now something happened and we haven't got a clue what but all three of those females all ate their, their egg sacs on the same night. So what a disaster. So that is three promising spiders that all decided on the very same night to eat their egg sacs. So we've now got no, none. They've all been gone. They've all been eaten. Now, that begs the question as to what on earth happened that all three females all reacted in exactly the same way. Now, nothing changed in this room. We didn't have anything go on at all. Um, so we have no clue, but it can't just be a coincidence that we have three different species of spider all around about the same time frame um, for their egg sacs. They were all about the same time frame, actually, um, but they all ate them on the same day. Why is that? Now this happens in breeding, you know. We don't always get to um, to see what the reasons are, and sometimes if you're if you're new at breeding, it, this can be very very disheartening. Even for like us, I was absolutely gutted for for like probably two days. I've been a little bit annoyed and upset about it, um, and it's because we can't fathom out why it happened and that is the most frustrating part so if you're new to breeding and your spider eats its egg sac or it dumps it and just ignores it or whatever or you get a dried up egg sac there's so many different variables when we're breeding try not to get disheartened you know try and sort of keep a little record of what went on and um, any reasons that you think may have caused it and then and we push push on forward and we try again and we, we do it again and again and again. And all the way through, even when you speak to people that are very, very experienced in breeding their spiders, they still suffer these same problems that beginners do from time to time. So try and stick with it. It's not always um, wonderful news, you know. Sometimes it can be really harsh. So just be prepared. Right, but that's our female all done and dusted. Um, She's looking like she's waving at us at the moment. She's got her food, so she will go down nice and quiet. We will get her lid. When we come into doing this now, we are looking, we are just going to, you'll see her, her toes are over the edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our lid like so. Bearing in mind, be very careful because she may still strike out. So we have to be very, very careful. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down flat like this to cut off any escape. Nice and gently, 
just touch her toes there you go they're in you can see there you can look in there look at that she's just back down nice and gently behind that bit of cork bark no trouble whatsoever no threat display perfect absolutely wonderful right then well that's a little bit of a long video but i hope you enjoyed it and um what a lovely result until next time don't forget be calm be gentle and love your spider and i will see you soon guys <laughs>